What is up, everybody? It is I, Missing Links, with the greatest of tutorials for you today. So if I was teaching someone music production and they already kind of knew a little bit about it, this would probably be the number one thing that would make the biggest impact on them that I could show them, right? So in one fell swoop, it'll actually cause you to save time. It will reduce your processor overhead. It'll cause you to write more deliberate, better songs, and it'll improve your mix downs. So I know it might sound a little bit too good to be true, but I promise you it's amazing. Working in this system is a breeze. I haven't seen anybody else do it like this. I've seen things that are close, but I haven't seen anybody else do it like this. So I'm thrilled to give this away to you guys because I love you and I want the best music possible for the world. So the first thing I want to say is don't underestimate the value of this. Um, I'm going to have to explain a couple of things before it's going to click into place. I'll be quick about it, but you might see things that sort of resemble some of the techniques you've seen in the past, and I guarantee this is different. Um, so just bear with me. We'll be really, really quick about it. Uh, but but just follow along and by the end of it, you're gonna be like, oh damn, I need to implement this post haste. Uh, so let's dive right in. So the general idea here is we are going to route everything, instead of going to the master directly, we're going to route it to sends only. And everything is going to either go to the front layer or it's going to go to the back layer. Right? And this would correspond to what you want in the foreground of your song versus the background of your song. Right? The background layer is going to get sidechain compressed out by bus C. This is very important, this sidechain bus. Now, the reason that we do this is that we can dial in just how much we want every single thing to be sent to the sidechain compressor. So if we want our drums to really be pushing stuff out of the way hard, we would put our sidechain value all the way up on that, the send to bus C all the way up. Whereas if we want our melody to just be like a little bit pushing that extra little bit to give itself some space, we wouldn't have to dial it in 100%. So this is our first axis of mobility or freedom, right? Where we can dial in how much each sound is contributing to this sidechain process, right? Now the second axis of mobility actually comes from this front ground versus this background send, because we can send them not 100% to the front ground and 100% of the background, we can split them up, right? So this is like a 50-50 split. With the sidechain compression, half of the signal is going to be sidechain compressed out, and so this is like the sidechain compressor is 50% wet on just this melody. So for each and every single track in your whole song, you can dial in based off of how much you send it to the front and how much you send it to the back, how much is it going to be sidechained out of the way, meaning how much in the background versus the foreground is it going to be, right? So you can dial in how much is doing the pushing like for each track and then how much is each track getting pushed, all with a single sidechain compressor. Now, the reason this is such a game changer is because you can handle 95% of your side chaining needs just from this single side chain compressor, right? You have a fast attack, fast release, and that's what you mo want for most things. Unless you're trying to like do that pumping thing in house where you have like a longer release time and you want it just triggered by the kick drum, then you would want to have another one of these side chain compressors attached to the kick drum. But Overwhelmingly, all your side chaining you can get done in moments just by dialing in with what you want to send to the side chain signal and then blending the amount of side chaining you want done by blending this A and B, right? And you can do this section by section, sound by sound in your track. So I'll show you this in action in just a minute, but I want to show you how it's built first. Um, I'm doing this in Ableton, but I guarantee you can do this in FL and um, logic and all that, right? So general idea is your tracks, which are going to by default be sent to the master and like all DAWs, right? Uh, you would just go sends only, whatever that is to you. Uh, and then you would have these return tracks, right? Pretty standard stuff. Um, and so we need three return tracks. We've got our front layer, our back layer, and our side chain layer. Now the side chain layer does not go out. So we either go sends only or we turn this off or both. And then the last thing that we need is this compressor. The compressor is going to listen to that thing that we just turned off, right, bus C. And we will go fast attack, right, fast release. Now some compressors do little clicks and pop if you go too fast, just FYI. Um, that's why I use the Live H8 uh, compressor because it's actually better than the Live 9 and 10 compressor, and 11 I guess now. Um, and it's got these feedback and feed forward models. Um, just 
thought you'd like to know that. It clicks and pops less. It's kind of a little bit better. Uh, and you can still find it if you Google for it. Um, but basically, yeah, we're done. Uh, you know, the only other thing to do is decide where we actually want to send these. So you send everything that you want in the foreground to A, everything you want in the background to B, all right? Or you do some blending of them together and use that as a mixing, right? And so depending on how you have this set up, like if you're at minus six and minus six, this is like 50% versus 50%. If you're at minus 12 and minus six, or if you're six decibels away in general, it's like 67%. Uh, in this case, in the background, meaning that it's 60% 7% wet on this sidechain compressor, right? And the, if you don't know, the way I did the math is minus six decibels means it's half as loud. Uh, so this is half as loud as that. So we have three halves or three parts. And so we've got two of the parts in B, right? One of the parts in A. And so that's two thirds, right? 67%. But yeah, so you can just kind of dial it in and use this as a, an extra parameter to do the mixing across your track. And that's the other thing is you can do this different throughout your track, right? Because sometimes you want your melody to be in the foreground the first time it plays through, right? And then the second time you want it in the background so like the basses can shine through or something like that. Uh, so this allows that. And then for C, you would just dial in how much do you want each thing to be pushing away. And you can do that based off of how it sounds. Like literally as you're dialing it in, it's like, oh man, this needs to be pushing away harder and harder. Like it's still muddy. Let's keep cranking C up, right? And so you can literally dial in how much you want it to cut through each sound you want to cut through just by cranking it up on C. Um, by default, I try and have as much stuff in the back layer as I can and all the very most important things in the front layer. Um, the other thing I want to mention while we're here before I open this track is uh, this does not cause phasing or any problems like that because we are only doing dynamics processing. So all we're doing is turning up and down the volume, right? We're not causing any, you know, phase problems as a result. So when you add these back together, it's going to sum perfectly back to normal, uh, less the volume differential from the compressor. Now, it is important that you do not do any EQing or other types of filtering or anything else that would impact the phase on the front and back layer. If you want to do something like that, do it on the master or make another return track that these guys send to, right? And do it on that one. But don't, don't do it on this front and back layer. Make sure that those are sending together uh, without changing the phase so that you can blend in the A's and the B's. That's very, very important. So let's go into a track really quick so I can show you this in action. All right, so this is a track I'm in the middle of. Um, you can see the routing is a little bit different, um, but basically A and B are going to D and then D goes to E and D e goes to the master. But basically what you need to know is that A and B are the same as they were before. We've also just got this E that is also like the front front, right? This is an adaptation of the Skrillex mix bus template. Um, so if you've seen like the Mumbai power video that dropped or uh, uh, he's breakdown of it or anything. This is an adaptation of that that adds this front back stuff that we've been talking about. Um, but I, I actually have a video going through my, my whole production template uh, that I'm going to drop, I think, right after this video. So um, yeah, like hit subscribe and everything and like the alarm bell so that you get notified of that. But I'll go into this whole template uh, in that video. But anyway, so you can see that a bunch of stuff is sent to A, that there's stuff that's sent to B, there's stuff that's sent to both of them, right? There's stuff that is being automated. And as I mix down this track, I will do more of this automation, like being very clear about like what should be in the front ground right now, what should be in the background right now. Um, and then, yeah, drums and stuff are all going to the pre-master, which is like the front front. The kick and the snare actually it looks like they go to the drums, but these are getting sent straight to the pre-master. Uh, they just, uh, they're not getting sent to drums like these guys are. Um, and so... Yeah, watching it in action, you can see here, you can hear the different parts. Right, and say I think that that snare is like too deep, I could dial back just on the snare, right? Be like, okay, let's go like minus eight decibels less, right? Right, and so now the gain reduction here is way less than it used to be. And then the other thing is you can actually do processing, right, on the the sidechain bus itself so you can actually start shaping things um or you can have a secondary one that can get sent here and do processing of individual instruments as well um in this so that you can like really craft your sidechain signal but like say i grab like a, a dynamics from kilohertz right um a really nice thing to do is downwards expansion right and so i could do that on the sidechain bus Right, and so now you can look here. Right, the whole thing now is is sharper. It's got like an even faster release, if you will, because I've I've used a gate to 
push the signal downward, right? And kind of shape the side chain signal how we want it if we wanted to. Um, and you can, uh, on this side chain compressor, compressor, you can also use an EQ and everything. So you can really like EQ in the frequencies that you want to uh, trigger this more significantly. Um, so you, you get quite a bit more control as well along the way compared to say just the EQ that's on this side chain compressor. So that's basically how to set it up. I want to show you how to dial it in, right? So listen to this. This is basically what you want to listen to for the background layer right now in this song is it's this Rhodes piano. Right, so I'm going to be listening to that as I crank up F, right, of this bass. This is like an like a, a bass guitar kind of thing. And I'm going to dial this up while looking over here. So we're going to see this gain reduction meter. We're going to dial it up and we're going to start seeing the bass show up in here. And we're also going to listen for that Rhodes piano for it to stop being muddy with this bass and to start playing, you know, nicely together. Right, so a little bit muddy at first, and you can't see it show up here at all. If you look in between these two spikes as I dial it in next time, you'll see it get filled in. Right, so I would dial this up and I'd just listen to that piano in the back. So too much, right? Right, you can hear that piano just disappear entirely like every time the bass hits, so it's a little bit too much. Right, and so I'd probably have it about here. So you can see it's doing a handful of decibels of gain reduction right there. Um, not too many, like two or three. Uh, it sounds like it's in a pretty good blend. Maybe I'd pull it back another decibel or so, but you get the point. So I've got the visual feedback right here. I've got the auditory feedback of hearing the roads and also listening to this bass and hearing its clarity. Right now this bass is on the, the front layer, but I could also have it on the back layer. Um, if you do have something that's sent to the side chain compressor and it's on the background layer, um, when it hits, it's basically going to be acting like a regular compressor for itself. So it will get side chained out by other things, but when it hits itself, it's going to um, reduce its own transients and stuff like that, right? It's going to squash itself down a little bit like that. Um, but sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of extra uh, volume like that on B. It kind of adds like a, a New York style con compression, right? Like a um, parallel compression this way because it's compressing itself on the B track because F is cranked up, right? And then on the A track, it's being unchanged. So it's helping it sit on the front layer and then adding a little bit of thickness underneath. If you need to add a little bit of body, just FYI, you can do parallel compression on the fly this way too. All right. Thank you so much for getting through this. You guys are absolute heroes for reals. If anything can save the world, it is music and you are making it happen. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Also, please subscribe. Uh, not only does it support me a lot, but it supports this entire community and we are growing together rapidly. So I would love you to be part of it and support you in your journey and support you making the world a better place. Um, a also, join our Discord if you haven't done that yet. That's probably the best place to get in contact with me, ask questions. And there's free stuff there. Uh, so if you go there, we've got free stuff. We'll have giveaways, all sorts of things. That's the best place for news and all those sorts of things. So I love you so much. Thank you again for contributing your music to the world. It means so much to me. Um, and I will see you on the flip side. Peace. <laughs>